Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Serious Strategy Game and welcome to Humankind. Humankind is a game that has just been released and that I have been following through development quite closely because this is an exciting game. This is a 4x game uh, that is covering the entire human uh, civilization, so it is of course pretty close to the Civilization series. But it's also taking its very unique spin on that and that is what I really really appreciate. Very good solid studio here uh, that has brought us the endless uh, s game series I guess. Um, so we, yeah, without further ado let's just jump in and, and see what we're going to get here. So I'm going to start out with a fairly normal uh, loadout here. We're going to play a large world, we're going to play normal difficulty and, and map size and everything. Um, I'm going to start with this dude and um, there's no immediately immediate benefit um, to, to to having that. So uh, yeah, let's uh, just uh, go ahead and start the game over here. And while it's loading up, you can already see that we're going to start with a nomadic tribe. And you can already glimpse at the artwork here, which I really, really adore. It's brilliant. I love it. Um, and I'm going to say that a couple of times, so you will need to excuse that. Uh, but it is a fairly lovely game. And you can just see how it brings everything together. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about that later, but I'm going to leave it over here to the narrator. Most of which are about rocks and ice at sub-zero temperatures in a vacuum. Rather boring. However, on a small damp rock, there is a story that bears a second look. It's your story. But the first four billion years or so mostly concern amino acids. Not much of a page to them. But then, over time, the amino acids bond together, and things start to get interesting, and a bit drier. A certain subspecies of hominid discovers that you can do more with a sharp rock than annoy your little brother. Tools and weapons are invented. The hominids begin to cooperate. Fire becomes a serpent rather than an unpredictable force of nature. They learn to tan the skins of animals for clothing. They learn ways to record and probably exaggerate their adventures. Eventually, these tribes learn to build shelters and immediately hold the first barbecue parties. This is the dawn of humankind. Struggle and cooperation have been rewarding. The Neolithic era draws to a close. The whole world beckons. This tribe has come far, but the rest of their story is your story. You are the one who will build them into a great civilization. How far will you push humankind? The race begins. A new world, a new history, untold possibilities. There is so much to see, to do, to learn, or depending on one's preferences, to destroy. Excellent. So I hope you can, you can I hope you can appreciate the artwork here because I again I adore it. Now uh, let's talk a little bit about the interface here. We've got of course the map. There are our dudes. Uh, this is currently called a hunting party. It is uh, consisting of one tribe, so that is one unit if you want. It can go up to four units. It does have four movement points, and we are going to move around because for now we are not a settled nation, and we don't immediately settle. This is one of the big differences uh, to civilization. So the big question is really where do we want to go to explore? We don't have much of an inkling where we are yet, except for this is looking somewhat like dry grass, forest. It's not maybe the fantastic area to be in, um, but we are going to see. So I do notice there is a little bit of a river up here. Um, moving on to a river, a river tile will basically use up all of your movement points. So I think we're actually not going to go that way. Um, we could go into here, but that is a forest, so let's actually move down here onto this little question mark, uh, which for now doesn't mean too much. There is an unknown strategic resource here. We shouldn't be too concerned with that. What we should be concerned with is this down here. There is, um, well, firstly, there's Saffron, uh, which is useful, but there's also a Curiosity, uh, which will give us some signs. Now, for now, we're not going to do much with that signs, but you can see up here in the top left, there are a couple of things uh, that we could do to achieve the next area. First is either have five population. Right now we only have the one unit. Uh, we can go to ten science or we can kill five animals. More on that later I'm guessing. Uh, let's move one tile at a time into this down here. 
You could learn what killed them. So we've got, uh, we found an old uh, site which did give us, uh, I think, one science. Yeah. So not really much, but it also gave us five influence. Five influence is very important uh, because the first five influence here does allow you to build your first outpost. And outposts can later on be turned into cities. And cities are extremely important, as you would guess. So we'll. I think we should explore a little bit more. I am somewhat curious as to, to the locations that they are suggesting here. This would give us a lot of production. You can see seven, seven corn or seven wheat, I guess. Food and 15 industry. So that is fairly lovely. And a somewhat uh, flip-sided view up here. Both of these would not be terrible locations, I think. Uh, but neither of them are fantastic either. Now, what I'm slightly concerned about is this cliff side here, because this seems to be hemming us in a little bit. Let's move on to the river now that is ending our turn. And uh, we can then move on next time around to here. But now I think we cannot actually move on to that cliff side there immediately. So it's a little bit of a bummer, but we can climb up here, which I guess is fine. Now, moving along... A river is actually pretty pretty nice so we might want to do that we could of course also still consider building an outpost here now what would actually go for that outpost is you can see these little things down here these little sort of I don't know what icon that is actually meant to represent uh, but these are specifically different and, and sort of bonus tiles so there's a waterfall over here you can see that you can there see some dimensional stones um, which I don't know what that means, uh, but it does, uh, uh, for some reason, increase our industry. And I think there was something over there. Can we zoom out? No, just over here. Terra Rossa. So that's more food and more science. Oh, that's that's actually a super, super interesting call. Right, uh, let's actually move on to that tile. Uh, of course, it's going to use up all of our points here. You know what? Let's do move, uh, Let's do build our first outpost here. And that is, of course, using all of our influence there. But you can already see how it changes the tiles around. It's going to take five turns for that to be established. Uh, but that's very nice, I think, to, to have that sort of... Also on that cliff side, it does sort of block the way in. And we do have the saffron, uh, which we'll be able to use later. There's also some tea around. So, honestly, seems like a, seems like a decent location. Right, and um, let's continue here this uh, way. Just follow the river. Um, upstream here towards this little thing over here and that is a food source and healthy children. I see where this is going. which is very lovely indeed because this is ooh, I might have wanted to settle over here because uh, let's look at that that is giving us some decent food over here these springs um, also some interesting things down here some money some some oh, aces down there Unfortunately, we are now locked into that position there, so mm, I'm guessing that's that's fine. Uh, but we have gathered some 15 food for now, and that's nice because once we have 20 food, uh, we're actually going to get another another uh, unit, which obviously is uh, very fantastic indeed. Let's move up here. Let's see whether we can find more. Can't see anything for now, but that might change in a moment. So uh, let's just oh look at that. There is something down here. Let's gather that. That is a little bit more food. And that's lovely because now we have two units. And two units are obviously better than one unit. And we're actually going to grab one of these units. Going to split them off so that we have now two armies. Which can separately explore. And that's lovely too. Because there is a little bit more food down here as well. Some nuts. So that gives us ten more food. And that is already sending us very nicely up on the snowball. Uh, let's follow this little valley over here with this group. And then you two, you guys over here. Let's... Uh, see what we've got here to our west I guess that thing over there is being established right let's continue to follow down here ooh more food that's lovely uh, that's only five food so that's not quite enough to to gather enough uh, another person that's fine up here where do we want you to travel I'm guessing we want to explore a little bit what's adjacent to us so let's grab more food over here Again, not too much, but uh, every little bit helps, so that is lovely. And we will be able to get some more signs there. It's not a lot, but that's fine. 
And then we've got this over here. So we've got the Fungal Horde. The shift to fix abodes hadn't been easy for the tribesmen and women who'd settled in the outpost, but they persevered and now thought of the land as home. When they discovered that one of their number had been hoarding mushrooms that he'd found in a nearby cavern for himself, it was a great blow to the spirit of the tribe. Now that they want to banish him for his greed, but, what, but that would mean being deprived of the location of the mushroom field. What is it you're reckoning? So we could get some five food for 10 turns, 50 food. I think that would give us another person here in in this over here. I don't know exactly how that is created. There's a lot uh, of things that I do not yet know. We could get some two signs. I think that's just flat out two signs. So that doesn't really help us at all. Uh, or we could banish him and get some bonus on some later research. I'm going to go with the protect. Uh, so he made a mistake, but the extra food will be welcome. And I'm hoping that that should give us more food, uh, which will in turn mean more people uh, in a short amount of time. So let's hope that that is indeed what is going to happen. Some more signs over here. That is lovely. We've also got something over here, copper. Now, copper is a strategic resource. Uh, you can see there are various different strategic, strategic resources here that uh, we haven't really uh, understood yet, but we do understand copper. Uh, we can't really exploit it for now, but we do understand it's there. Oh, and there's a lair over here, which is a dark and fetid dwellings of a dangerous, aggressive wildlife. Huh. Interesting. I'm very interested in that, but I do think we need to go through this canyon down here. That area up here also looks kind of interesting, but let's continue down this path. And then what we're going to do up over here with you guys is we're going to, of course, try to claim that food. That is going to give us some nuts, which is again going to give us some people. Um, again, we're going to split them off because I think usually we're going to double back down on here to, to, to explore that area with you. And then you guys can move down here. Fantastic. You Good. Built a first outpost, adding another territory to your empire. I know. You're hoping this is the beginning of something very, very big. Excellent. So here's our little dwelling. It doesn't do much for us for now. It's basically just uh, one person uh, that is sitting in here. But you know what? I think that's okay. It doesn't need to do that much more. Um, it is slowly growing here in terms of food. And you should be able to see the state is bountiful. Yeah, so that is giving us five more food for a couple of turns here. So that means that is going to grow over time. Uh, which is fantastic because we are already at four out of five people. So fairly soon uh, we should be able to get more food over here. Now here is an interesting factor because we have found our first animal. Remember if we kill five animals we can also advance to the next era. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, going to grab that food and then I am thinking that we are going to attack these guys and going to start our first battle over here. So we basically are fighting on the same map over here. I think we can stay where we are and then simply sort of try to attack them, hoping that we're going to come out on top here. We are pretty weak and we are only one unit. Uh, but then again, he's not the strategically most brilliant guy. You can see there's a little bit of fighting there. He's actually losing a little bit more than we are because we are a little bit stronger as, as a combat unit. Uh, but all in all, I'm hoping that we're going to survive this and he isn't. Okay, so we are surviving here with an average health of 6%, uh, which is just barely, barely, barely surviving this. Um, and we only got a couple of points there. I think, I think, oh, I think he might have, uh, he might have covered some of that food just to survive. Um, that being said, that's okay that you can see there's another deer down there. Um, that was potentially the worst fight I've ever had in, in any of my little test games before I really started here. But there's another layer here. Dangerous aggressive wildlife. That's that's interesting that there's so much aggressive wildlife here. Um, let's, let's try to find out what that is all about. And then of course we've got this unit up here. Let's walk through this canyon. See what we can find over here. Now, since this is all aggressive wildlife... 
I would prefer if we had more people here, of course. Nevertheless, uh, let's do grab the signs there. That's okay. And then, oh, oh, oh. There's a bear. I dislike the bear. Okay. Um, I'm guessing... Well, we could try to retreat. Do we want to risk a manual battle? The deployment area here that we've got is not so great, I have to say. So I think we're actually going to try to retreat here. There's no point in trying to fight this battle. You're walking away very far. Um, if we really don't have any chance of winning it. That being said, there is a sanctuary down here. So that is an area where wildlife basically exists and basically spawns new people. Uh, which is fine, but we can also burn it down and get a lot more food that way. And so that should push us over five people next time around, which I very much appreciate. So... Down here, I guess we have learned to stay away from these lairs, so I'm guessing we can double back uh, towards that territory up here. There is another curiosity here, so yeah, why not grab it, I think. There we go. And then we're going to end turn, and that should allow us to get to five people and grab the first star here. And that is fairly important, because that means we can now go to the... Oh, someone else has found something. And that's all right, though. Mm, what do we do down here? Now, we've got these two people. You could attack that animal. Oh, and we've found the first the first enemy group here. Now, we've also found that the bear there is trying to come after us. And unfortunately, if we were to go over here, that bear would sort of uh, be able to take us on there. Right, yeah, there's a zone of control mechanic, which basically means we can't we can't get away here. Seed of an idea. Yesterday, the tribe came across a vast trace of wild grains. The stalks swaying in the breeze like the wind playing over golden waters. The ground dawn grain could feed the tribe twice over. But one of the tribal elders had another idea. Instead of pounding the seeds into flowers, she suggests planting half of them so that grass may return next summer. It is a curious idea, at odds with the nomadic life, but perhaps a harboring of the future. What should we do? So we can plant that, or we can get this. Now, the thing is, we're not going to stay in nomadic tribe for much longer. So the food would be appreciated, but I think we are going to plant it. Um, so that should be nice. That should give us a nice boost in just a short while. Uh, that being said, let's have you guys travel up over here. Now, we can immediately advance towards the next area, so it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense to try to grab this area here. But we are going to do that anyway. It's just going to give us a little bit of food. Uh, not the most important, honestly. I think it's 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 more or less all right. Right, so uh, we can pick a culture. Let's, let's remind ourselves later. There's another idle army down here. Now, I think what we're going to do is we are actually going to attack that animal here before we advance to the next area, uh, because... I do think we can beat him, certainly with two people. So let's um, do a manual battle here, why not? Um, we are going to place you, my friends, a little bit to the rear here. Then we're going to end the deployment. We're going to end the round, have them come at us, uh, because I want them to be attacking the high ground over here. That's fine, very lovely. Good stuff there. You guys uh, stay towards the rear. Oh no, you know what? what we can actually do is get over here and then get this group because there is a bonus from friendly units uh, adjacent you're going to attack them, you're going to cause a lot of damage, that's fine, you're going to finish off the job that should give us enough food to actually get a third group into here five food yes, there we go, and a little bit of influence that is lovely indeed because that is meaning that means you guys are now three people which again is, is fairly lovely good you don't have any movement points though, so the big question really is, shall we advance to the next area here? And I think actually that is exactly what we're going to do. So let's do that and let's think about what we can do. So here is the thing and here's how this works. So there are a couple of different alternatives that we can pick and there are a lot of them, uh, which I really, really like. Um, all of them are, have different advantages and um, not so much disadvantages, it's really only upsides. Um, but 
Of course, you are foregoing some other benefit if you're not picking another nation. That is going to change from area to area. So in the first area, uh, this is the ancient area. There are a lot of ancient people. Assyrians, Babylonians, ancient Egyptians, Harpapanth, Harpapanth, oh Jesus, um, Hittites, Nubians, and so on. Uh, all of them have different advantages here, and we should actually check what they are. Now, in my little test game, I have uh, used the... some people. Phoenicians. Hmm. Now, there are different, different advantages here. So, there's always one advantage which you are going to keep throughout your gameplay. That is basically what you can do. Then, there is a certain specific building that you can build once per city or once per per region um, and then they do have specific units i'm not going to care about the units that much for now i'm mostly concerned about the uh inundations i'm guessing uh, or the the tip uh, the thing up here combat strength now i think we want to build up our uh, region a little bit more district industry I do like myself um, some, some industry, so Egyptians might be nice. Science is fine, it doesn't matter that much sometimes. Land movement speed is super lovely. We can't use these guys here because they have already been taken. And you can see uh, the these guys were pretty pretty aggressive here. There's, there's an, a defensive fortification, there is a unit bonus, so that's not that great. Stability is pretty lovely. It's, it's a small bonus, but it does add up over time. Science is very lovely. Science per adjacent mountain. Let's, let's take a look here at the map. So, we've settled up here. There is no actual mountain. Um, this is just cliff sides. So, I don't think that is going to be that relevant. What I do notice is that we are sitting on a river. So, using some river bonus might be extremely lovely. Now, that being said, I don't see that many other rivers. So, there's a small one down here. But it's really only a small one. This area down here has some signs, which would be lovely to grab at some point. Hmm. Now, there are some proper mountains around here. And building some Confucian school around there would be lovely, but I don't see any place where we can grab more than two of these mountains. Oh well, if we were to build it, for example, over here, that would give us a bonus of four mountains, four adjacent mountains. So Confucian school might be the way to go. The zoo. That would give us a massive boost on mountains. Phoenicians. Traders, hmm. I think this is this is not so great. The Haven. What about the All Max? Influence is is useful. Hmm. Nubians, money. I don't really think we want money, so I am a little bit looking towards these guys because they produce food on river, and that is fairly lovely. Other than that, the Egyptians are nice. But on the other hand, I am very kind of, or very fond of the idea of using this mountain range here to boost our signs to nowhere. Because 20 signs would be, would be incredibly good. So for that, we would need to build, let's say, our city over here. It would establish pretty fast. I think I like that. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's do say that we are a little bit Chinese here. We are using the zoo. Uh, and we're going to adapt that. So we are going to get a little bit more stability on districts. That's lovely because you can see normally, um, well, you should be able to see here, uh, that normally districts, so when you expand your city, do cost you stability. Uh, we are not going to do that. Uh, we're going to ha have actually the bonus districts, at least, are going to give us stability and every other thing too. So I think that's great. We also have these sort of vehicles here. Which would be okay, but I'm not sure that we are going to use them after all. So yeah, let's uh, confirm that, and that means oh, the challenges of a young we're going to advance the area. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you 
you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Perhaps you don't really need to focus on markets when you have deep philosophers and dangerous chariots. Lovely. So here we go. Culture is chosen. And you can see how everything changes now. Um, our units change. Our overall layout changes. Let's get rid of that over here. And you can even see our little outpost here changes. And, and I really, you know what? I do like our outpost here on this perched on this cliff where these where there's this small pass through these cliffs. Um, and, and it's very, very lovely, I think. So the big question uh, that we're going to face here is, are we going to build other sites and which one are we actually going to introduce to be our actual city over here um i think what we're going to do is we're going to evolve this outpost here directly into our first city that does give us a couple of bonuses and you can see it's uh, sort of being built over here and that is the first city of Haojing, uh, because we are chinese of course so that is lovely and you can see we can immediately start to build a couple of districts here we could build the confucian school now i don't think it would do a lot of uh, us a lot of good so we could for example build it over here it would give us a little bit of stability but we would lose access to the food so that's not necessarily the best idea we can also build a farmer's quarter and that would um, basically give us access to the food in all adjacent areas here so you can see how that would change and you can just over the left here you can see how it would give us one fruit uh, one food from that tile and that's not the worst idea, uh, but I think it's also not necessarily the best because we would not be getting access to the industry. On the other hand, if we were to build industry over here, we could get access to that industry, but then not to the food. So, yeah, you can see just sort of how that works. Now, that being said, if we were to build, let's say, over here, we would be getting a lot more access from, from these tiles down there. And I think I kind of like that idea. Uh, because especially about because of this tile here this is a very useful tile three uh, hammers if you want are not that bad not bad at all and uh, that said is that the direction that we want to advance in and uh, we could also try to get more influence we're not we don't have that much influence for now how much would the next claim territory cost here 10 and it would be costing us a little bit to make that adjacent towards our main base. But I think I still like the idea. So what we're going to do here is with these scouts, notice that they're not uh, having this food uh, collection ability anymore. We're going to build an outpost over here. It's going to take a couple of turns to actually do that. It's going to use a little bit of um, influence to do that. But it is going to give us access to that super uh, useful point down there which is actually a clay field as well. So that doesn't answer what we're going to use with the city for now, though. Um, but I do think, I actually do think that the maker's quarter here is potentially the best thing. And uh, notice how we're losing some food access here from that specific place. Uh, but still, I think this is a fantastic place to do that. So we're going to do that. Uh, that's going to be ready in six turns. Now, you've got two people over here and you would be ready in six turns. We could ask our people to be more on the farming side that would push that up to 12 turns but it would bring down the growth pattern here a little bit more or we couldn't do it in four turns you know what i think we're going to do it like that we're going to focus on the industry here first and we're going to actually use industry food science money yeah i like that idea okay let's do it like that that being said we're going to grab the uh, armies that we've got <laughs> well, especially these guys down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of you guys. You're going to come up here. You're going to explore around the corner like that because exploring still is useful. We still want to learn more about the area that we're living in here. And I think that is going to be just generally very, very useful indeed. Right, you guys uh, can come up here towards our base area. And then we have another idle army up here. What are you guys going to do? Now, I'm thinking that we could um, pull up here 
come closer towards these guys, maybe merge with them. But the next thing that we actually need to check, and that is the last thing that we're going to do here, is we need to think about what we are going to research. We could go for the artisans, uh, so we could go for calendar, which is going to give us some access to artisan quarters and granary. Artisan quarters are useful to access bonus resources, like for example the saffron over here, uh, which might be very useful because it gives us more benefits. We've also got a tea deposit here, which does give us more food and stability. So I'm almost tempted to use these uh, to, to try to exploit them, that would not be a bad idea, I think. Uh, we could also think about domestication, um, but I think we don't have access to horses for now, so I think that's actually not necessarily the best idea. Carpentry gives us access to a lumber yard, which is also incredibly useful because there is a little bit of wood here. There's a little bit of woodland up here. This is woodland. This is woodland, so yeah, that would effectively increase the production of, uh, well, we'd get, I think, three more production, so maybe it's not incredibly useful for now. So yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go for calendar here, because that is going to give us the thing there, and that is lovely indeed. Right, that being said, uh, I'm going to put up a cut here and hope you enjoyed. Do leave a like and everything and hope to see you around for the next episode. That being said, thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.